Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Old Forester 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. Now this is coming to us out of that Whiskey Row series that they've been doing for a few years now, which included that 1920 Prohibition style that everybody seemed to really enjoy. I know that bottle was 115 proof, roughly around $55. Uh, this one is still about that price point, $55. Proof is down to 93, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually think that's a really good proof for a good drinker straight out of the bottle without having to add any water or anything like that. Uh, but as for the 1910 Old Fine Whiskey, what were they trying to do here? So in 1910, they had a distillery fire. That fire caused uh, bottling production to kind of stop until they could get that situated. And during that time, they had a vat that was ready to be bottled that couldn't. So they had to put that vat back into brand new charred oak American barrels, basically double barrel maturing that bourbon. And when production and everything was ready to resume, they got those barrels, bottled them, and noticed there was a profile change, which is to be expected there. So this is what they were trying to recreate here. And in order to do that, they did the same double barrel maturation process. They took four-year-old old Forster that was ready to be bottled, put it into a second barrel that had been extremely heavily charred. And they talk about it, it was charred to the point where any further charring might have damaged the integrity of the barrel, might have caused it to leak more. And so that's what we have, uh, that really heavy char, that bourbon going into. It spent roughly a half year, almost a full year in those barrels before being bottled into what we have here. Um, as to how it affects or how what I think about the overall bottle, well, I'll say it like this. I picked up this bottle yesterday. I shared it with some friends and look at the damage that it took. I mean, we had a couple pours of it. Matter of fact, I was on Instagram yesterday and posted a picture of this side by side with the early times bottled in bond. And the reason I did that was because I really, really love the early times bottled in bond. I mean, for the price point, I think roughly around 30-ish dollars in Kentucky, uh, one liter, it gives you a really deep profile and it's 100 proof. So when I tasted this one, I love the depth. I love the richness of it. So I was kind of comparing those two back and forth to try to, in my mind, to figure out which one's the better buy. Value-wise, it's hard to beat that early times. But the old Forrester 1910 is, to me, more enjoyable experience when I'm drinking it. It's just a little more viscous. The depth of flavor is a little more uh, rich. And I love that chocolate-covered cherry tone that it gives you with the smoke element on top. Just love it. So let's go ahead and get to the nose and characteristics. As you can tell, it already has that color to it. It's fantastic. But on the nose, the first thing I'm always hit with on a lot of good bourbons is a good brown sugar caramel element. So that's definitely in here. That sweetness is on the nose. But there's a depth here that I'm going to attribute to like a more of a sorghum than molasses um, nose to it. And then you have this a cinnamon and clove combination Maybe a little heavier on the clove here. There's some citrusy, not lemon, not lime, it's orange oil underneath that. And then you have that bright cherry tone. Um, and the cherry note is, again, if you know any, me and you know any of you've been watching any of my videos, I really am sensitive to artificial cherry. I do not like that in a bourbon. This one is a very natural cherry, real cherry element going on. There's a little bit of a sourdough underneath everything else. You have to really kind of dig and focus for that. So that's not, you know, you're not going to sit there and just nose and go, oh man, sourdough. No, it's, it's in there, but it's underneath everybody else. Then that oak, that, that smokiness, that oak resin is just back there just dwelling the whole time really really nice i'm almost gonna call maybe even a little a leather note an old leather aromatic in there roasted maybe a little bit of a roasted nut characteristic but it's very very subtle that's kind of it's, i think that may just be the char playing with everything else just giving you kind of a roasted tone to it. All right, let's go ahead and get to the taste. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's just the first sip. 
Always judge that second one. Here we go. Yes, viscosity is fantastic here. Medium, medium high on viscosity. The flavors are just rich, mouth enveloping. You get hit with that, that brown sugar sorghum, almost again, a little molasses-y type element. Initially, you get that. And right as soon as that happens, you start getting hit with the that clove, that cinnamon underneath the clove. Cinnamon is very, very well um, maintained here. It's not spicy by any means. Um, the clove, that orange oil element just comes in. The oak is almost immediately shows up on that mid palate as well. Uh, but it's a very, very rich uh, characteristic of oak and the smokiness is definitely noticeable that barrel char oh yeah the cherry tone the chocolate res is just uh it's like a if you took a fudge and maybe you dusted it with cocoa powder you get that sweet fudge but it's also a little a little dry a little just that cocoa characteristic is definitely in here the cherry note is so natural, such a, a great tone for to be that vibrant and yet not fall into that artificial category for me is pretty amazing. And it just rolls. Now here on the back end, you start getting the leather, that old leather. You start getting tobacco way back here in the back end, like a really fine cigar. And that roasted nut element that I was getting, and it's just that barrel char, that heavy char, Almost makes me think of like a real light uh, roasted coffee bean element way back here in the back. But I think if you, you know, if you're sensitive to coffee, maybe you don't like coffee, you could very easily translate that to a slight roasted nuttiness in the back. Man, yeah. Fantastic whiskey. Um, if you see it out there, I do highly recommend you pick this bottle up. Bottle or two would be nice. Um, I think it's a very, very uh, great way for them to send out that Whiskey Rose series on this high note, because that's exactly what this is. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I mentioned earlier, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitter every now and then, and Facebook at my Liquor Hound page. Keep leaving all those great comments. I really do appreciate them, and I try to answer them as quickly as I can. Everybody have a great evening, and cheers.